I call Claire Curran, five Th minutes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, the Prime Minister's statement is an opportunity to get a bit philosophical uh, about why we're politicians and about why we're all here, why we're all committed to a set of values and what we actually came in here to do and whether or not we've managed to achieve any of it. So I'm going to start with a quote from A.A. Milne, who, as you all know, wrote Winnie the Pooh and wrote, pay attention to where you are going because without meaning, you might get nowhere. Well, Mr Speaker, this national government has not only lost its way, but it's turning our political system into a fake democracy. A fake democracy where there is no Kiwi dream and where there isn't much meaning. Just a month ago, New Zealand slipped down again in the global transparency rankings. We are no longer the least corrupt country in the world. Transparency International 2016 Corruption Perceptions Index ranks us behind Denmark, Finland and Sweden. This is our worst ranking since 1998, which is the year before Helen Clark became the Prime Minister. Our public service works hard to be open and impartial, but this government is doing damage to our reputation. Whether it's damage through the Saudi uh, sheep saga, whether it's the Oravida scandal, whether it's handing out uh, payments to media works, whether it's cronyism and dodgy deals. But of course, that's not all. Uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, Jonathan Young talked about the opposition undermining the achievements of this government. Well, what's really been happening since 20, 2009 is that we've seen a steady erosion of democracy in this country. There are some glaring examples of this. Some of the most glaring include the um, freezing of funding and the erosion of, and the gutting of public broadcasting in this country, the stifling of reason debate public debate and the scoffing and belittling of those who have attempted to keep debate alive in this country. Um, we've seen, as I said, we've been embroiled in scandals around ha uh, handouts to media works and editorial interfer interference in um, Maori television, questionable appointments to the board of Radio New Zealand, frozen funding to Radio New Zealand, New Zealand On Air and Maori television, the killing off of TVNZ7, I could go on and on. It's just the tip of the iceberg. But there's more. Increased central government powers at the expense of elected regional and local government. Of course, the um, uh, suspending elected council at Environment Canterbury is the glaring example of that. There's the withholding of information under the Official Information Act, delaying or releasing documents that um, are mostly re redacted. This is not a government that is committed, committed to transparency and openness. And we saw late last year when the Ombudsman released a report into the Official Information Act which shows governments, departments being encouraged by ministers' offices to withhold material for political reasons um, was incredibly disappointing. That report also contains some disappointing information from the Ombudsman with her suggestion that media and politicians could be charged for information and which would set a dangerous precedent. This is a long-standing convention that agencies don't charge media or politicians because it would stifle the free flow of information, which is in the public interest. So what happened, Mr Speaker? In January, we had the first sign that, though, that agencies are charging for OIA requests, with the Reserve Bank charging a Fairfax business journalism as part of that policy. And then we've got hard evidence of government inaction on transparency and accountability with the Open Government Partnership Report uh, released just a couple of weeks ago. New Zealand is part of an open government partnership consisting of 69 governments, um, which found a huge lack of consultation and ambition in opening up um, the government, an action plan consisting of programs already underway, not designed to improve government practice. Um, that report does not practice what it preaches, Mr Speaker. The, we are seeing a lack of openness and transparency. What New Zealanders want is a sense of meaning from their government. Instead, we have a government that has lost its way.